Ladies and gentlemen, our country is going through some traumatic times. The people of this nation decided on December 1 that they were going to take a radically new direction. And that is, they ended the continuity of the status quo and opted for a new beginning by electing in a coalition under the independent candidate of Adam Barrow. You all know what happened from December 9th to date. The country is facing a near crisis. We are not yet in a crisis, but we are getting there. The attitude of the coalition has been very consistent. The mandate of the people have shifted, and we are working to material, to actualize the voting aspirations of our population. We are doing our best to maintain law and order, to remain peaceful, to remain stable, and conduct ourselves in the most decorous manner, taking into cognition the stability of this country, the overwhelming interest of Gambians. And that is why, since December 2nd, the coalition, its entire membership, have conducted themselves in accordance with the law. We have affirmed the right of the outgoing president as a candidate to contest election, election results. Unfortunately, the matter hasn't had any traction so far because the president himself was not able to empanel a Supreme Court. That was not our difficulty. That was his personal challenge. What we saw a few days ago in the Supreme Court was a number of APRC supporters who went and approached an empty court, an empty Supreme Court, a Supreme Court that was supposed to hear and determine a petition filed by President Jammeh. We are told that the case was adjourned to sometime in May. But the Supreme Court is not just an ordinary court. It is the highest court of the land. It is a place where sages of the law or sense of the law sit down and deliberate solemnly on any matter that is brought before them. But the Supreme Court also has its rules. These rules are grounded. They drive out of our laws. It states that at least a minimum of five judges must sit and preside and hear a matter. A single judge of the Supreme Court may have the jurisdiction to determine an interlocutory matter. But even adjoining a case, this is legally questionable. The fact that the case has been adjourned, allegedly adjourned to the fifth. How was it adjourned? Who adjourned it? What is the legal basis for this? Do you have jurisdiction? Jurisdiction is key. It's the most important element in the administration of justice. I am not arguing the matter here, because once a matter is before the court, you don't go into its merits. But we are provoked to speak, because we heard someone who allegedly was appointed a Minister of Information, who went on international media, to be precise, the BBC, to say that since they filed a petition before the Supreme Court, the very act of filing a petition legally empowers the outgoing president to remain in power until May. This was the statement directly attributable to a person who was allegedly appointed Minister of Information. Now, I want to clarify this. This position, of this, this position is false. It is incorrect. It is not grounded on law or wisdom or logic. Everybody knows filing a petition in court operates in no other way than an appeal. You are appealing against the decision, an electoral decision of the population that was announced by the Independent Elect Elections Commission. The fact that you file a petition does not preclude the swearing in of the person who is elected. That is the law of the land. You can file a petition, you can file a thousand petitions. It does not stop in law, according to Gambian constitutional law, according to our jurisprudence. It does not stop the person who is elected from being sworn in as president. And it does not, under Gambian constitution, any other statute or convention, grant the outgoing president, our outgoing government, the authority or the power to remain in government.
This is highly erroneous. It is a very dangerous statement because the person who uttered those statements have no iota of what government law is all about. What he stated was his personal opinion. It is not the law of the land and I want to make that very clear. Filing an election petition is just like any other ordinary process in a court of law. It does not stop the act being complained of from being nullified automatically by the very act of filing it alone. In other words, unless there is a conclusive judicial determination on the status of these elections, that is, the Supreme Court must hear the case, must determine it and dispose of it in its entirety, then whatever their ultimate decision or judgment or ruling or order would be, then that would be conclusive in law. We have not reached that stage yet. What they are doing is trying to preempt preempt the decision of a court that is yet to be empaneled. So we have a court that is yet to be empaneled because when you appoint judges of the Supreme Court, assuming that they were appointed in 2010, way back, which is not the case, the appointments ought to be gazetted. And then the gazette has to run for a period. Then they have to be sworn in. And yet you have an election petition that must be decided within 30 days, according to the law. How can you do all this in 30 days? How? You said you've pushed it all the way down to May. That's how many months? Are we living in a jungle? What happens to the laws? When the law that states it must be disposed of within 30 days. What kind of court are they going to in May? Who is going to preside? For whatever President Jame and his APIC would like to do, in May, I am absolutely certain that he is going to be, he was going to be a former head of state. He can pursue whatever remedies he wants to pursue, but he can do so as a former head of state. Because on the 19th of January, President-elect Adam Abaro will be sworn in as the Gambia's new president. Inshallah, nothing is going to change that. We will have a new president on the 19th. And from that date, President Jame, according to Section 63 of the Constitution, will become a former head of state. That is the state of affairs, and that is our position. And this position is in consonance with the wishes of the Gambian people, one that is also being stultified by the international community, notably ECOWAS, African Union, and the United Nations. So we are on very strong ground. Regardless of what may be done, what they may say, allegedly deploying military around the country, digging trenches and putting in military hardware, we are not bothered by any of these things. President Jame is the head of state. His term will come to an end on January 19th. He has the legal right to do that. He is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. We see this merely as routine exercise. People are telling us that these are very serious acts, that we should be acting in a, in a very drastic manner. But what we are an incoming government that is grounded on the law, that would like to utilize the rule of law as the basis of our governance system. We cannot deny, we cannot deny the fact that President Jame is the legitimate head of state of the country and according to section 125, executive power of the state vests in the president and it continues to vest in him until the 19th. Let's see whether he'll be able to deploy soldiers all over the country or anywhere else beyond the 19th. Then from that date, as we call it, the new president will be sworn in, he'll become a former head of state or he'll become a rebel leader and will be treated as such. If he wants to tow the part of honor and dignity, I'm convinced that come on the 19th, President Jame will cede power and if he has any grievances to pursue in the court of law, we guarantee him that there is going to be due process and fair play. In a borough administration, the judiciary of the Gambia will be fully independent and his rights and whatever controversy are in place will be looked upon by a panel of impartial judges who will render a verdict that will be in consonance with justice. This we uphold. That they have filed an injunction. We are aware. We are informed that they have they filed an injunction in the courts in order to stop the inauguration of President Barrow on the 19th. Let me be categorically clear. And let me say this with all the emphasis at my command. 
you can file a thousand injunctions. President elect Barrow will be inaugurated on the 19th of January, inshallah. There is no injunction that can stop that. We know the courts are not properly constituted. Which court have you filed that injunction into? We have an idea. What we are saying is, it is not grounded on law since the outgoing president seemed to be ignoring every provision in the constitution. We call upon him to respect the constitution of the Gambia as the chief executive of the state. We call upon him to uphold the laws of the country. We call upon him to enforce the laws of the country. But most importantly, we call on him not to continue to flout the constitution or abuse the process of the courts. This is not going to help him. It does not all go well for a person who ruled this country for 22 years as a soon-to-be former head of state. He should know what to do not to plunge this country either in a constitutional crisis or in a state of insecurity and uncertainty. That would be a very terrible legacy to end his term of office with and it would be highly disappointing and ungrateful to the Gambian people that a person who was given the mandate to rule them for 22 years will leave this country or is bent on leaving these countries with, with permanent scars, continuing to inflict grievous harm, not only on the constitution, but on the psychology and the minds of all Gambians. This would be unfortunate. President-elect continues to use diplomacy because he does not want this country to be engraved or to be engulfed in fire. He does not believe that the personal ambition of any individual is worth the blood of a single Gambian or any other individual. For this reason, he continues to express his confidence in diplomacy as a tool of foreign policy that will bear positive consequence on negotiations that are undertaken by well-meaning people in West Africa and around the world. But that is not to say that his confidence or his resort to diplomacy as an effective solution to our imbroglio must not be construed as a sign of weakness. President-elect Barrow and the entire coalition are resolved to enforcing the results of the election of December 1st and that the mandate of the people shall stand come January 19th without fail. So we call on President Jame once again to toe the part of honor and dignity and hand over power peacefully to the new government that was elected by the people. And we ask him to de-escalate the tension that is rising in our country as a result of his actions and to assure the Gambian people that he means well and to stop sending conflicting messages and information out there that he's not going to step down for that is a violation of the constitution and the abrogation of the will of the people through their votes. These are very serious legal anomalies. They are grievous constitutional breaches for which a president, sitting president, must not engage in. We ask him to respect the law, to be true to his conscience and stop deploying armed men around civilian areas in order to instill fear among Gambians. For Gambians have decided that they have given good riddance to fear. They have welcomed their independence and their sovereignty as individuals and will not be cowed down. And the coalition will support Gambians. We call them to prepare themselves for an aggression on the 19th where they are Ushabis and be ready to go to the independent stadium. And we are doing everything in our power to make sure Gambians come out in their thousands. And we call upon them that nothing Nothing disastrous is going to happen on that day. And President Jame will be incapacitated from wreaking havoc in this country. We are speaking a language of peace, but we want him to understand that we will not allow anybody and we will not tolerate anyone, no matter how high or how low you may be, to plunge this country into permanent crisis, hoping to give it your back so that the Gambia will continue to burn. This is not going to happen. We call upon him to continue to respect the ongoing dialogue that is taking place both openly and clandestinely so that we can reach a consensus and give the Gambian people a new democracy and a new lease of life that they deserve. 
and for which President Jame will be honored by history and for which we are willing for which we are willing to treat him like a former head of state in accordance with the act of parliament that grants President Jame, President, uh, out, uh, former President Jawara the privileges he's enjoying under a statute that he, Jame himself, signed into law. We want to give him all the privileges of a former head of state and we want him to be in a situation where he could help guide the nation in times of crisis and where there are situations where we need counsel. We want to call upon him. He must not deprive himself of this opportunity and this privilege and render himself an enemy unto the people of the Gambia who made him who he is for the past 22 years but no longer wishes him to remain in the highest office of the land. This is the message we'd like to send out. And this is the message that we took out to ECOWAS mini summit that took place in, in Abuja, for which I was honored to represent the incoming government as a stakeholder and to make our position known that we continue to support a peaceful diplomatic solution to the political crisis that is about to engulf this country. And we believe that as Gambians we can talk to each other and resolve this problem even without the intervention of non-Gambians. We believe at the end of the day President Jame has the interest of the Gambia at heart and he will cede power on the 19th in the interest of the Gambia and his love for Gambians. This is what we believe he will do and we know that he will do the right thing. We want Gambians to ignore the military build-up that is taking place. We want Gambians to ignore the bellicose and the hostile language that is coming from President Jame's entourage. What is important is what President Jame is saying, that he wants forgiveness, he wants a general amnesty for people uh, of our own country, and these are issues that we are willing to listen to, we are willing to discuss as Gambians unto each other, and we are willing to encourage our people to go into open dialogue on these matters. This is the statement coming from President Jame himself, and this is what we are taking seriously. What we ask President Jame to prevail over his people, to stop speaking negative language that seeks to inflagrate tension in this country and put the Gambia into chaos. Thank you very much.